Thank you for the introduction. Actually, I was, uh, I'm a PhD student at Purdue University, and <laughs> not from UCI. And um, this, this work is a joint work by Fudan University and UCI, and I, uh, I was a math student at Fudan University when that work was, was done. And our work is USB bypass, accelerating Cisco intensive applications. Okay, we all know that Cisco is a mechanism that allows a processor to request services or functionalities from a kernel. Um, in this example, it's quite simple, and the printf will trap in the kernel by a Cisco write system call. A kernel will do something for that, uh, that, that USB code that is output a string to the console, and the system call has some cost, uh, which is direct cost and indirect cost. Direct cost contains kernel high switch. Um, since constructions like this call, this right, and by testing on in, on, in our uh, Intel's Galaxy CPU and the Linux operating system, we found that this calls without operations uh, cost about 1,000 uh, CPU cycles, which is the in the, uh, which is the direct cost. For indirect cost, um, L1 and TLB cat could be polluted by this call, and the out of order execution of CPU will stall to guarantee the the execution order, and um, the recently the security mechanism KPTI for for the meltdown defense will also introduce indirect cost because of the people working and TLB miss. So a lot of work tried to reduce this call cost, like uh, Cisco 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 batching, like IU ring using kernel in kernel sandbox like EBPF. And, uh, and kernel bypass mechanisms like DPDK. But all these um, approaches require noticeable development, development efforts. Uh, in other words, the uh, developers need to refactor the software to, benef to benefit the legacy or uh, current applications. So we propose user space bypass, which requires no development efforts to reduce its cost. Uh, we name it UB. UB transparently translates user space instruction to kernel space for Cisco intensive applications. In the lab picture, it shows how a regular Cisco works, and the, the execution flow will trap into kernel to do some functionality and return to user space to, to other functions. Um, the right picture shows how UB works. Actually, the user space code will run in kernel space, uh, and there will be just one entry and one exit. So most of the Cisco costs will be reduced. And the, um, we design UB into three components. The first component is called Hot Cisco uh, Profiler, which runs in kernel mode, and it will identify Hot Cisco calls. And Hot Cisco calls are Cisco that will be followed closely by another Cisco. The second component is called BTC Translator. Uh, it runs in user mode, and it will translate the user's basic code into uh, into, into BTC, and BTC is called binary um, translation cache. And the instruction between two six calls is called fast path in our work. Um, BTC translator will also guarantee the security. And finally, BTC runtime will run BTC in, kernel, in the kernel mode. These are our three components. And in the next uh, slides, I will introduce them in some diagrams. This picture shows how a regular Cisco works. It will trap into kernel uh, and do some functionality and then exit kernel to execute the code path in the user space. The, the second Cisco will be invoked in a similar way. And we hook on our first component after the Cisco entry function, and it will detect which Cisco is hot. And if the Cisco is hot, the code path between them is called fast path. And uh, this component contains three main steps. The first two steps will uh, find which uh, thread contains some hot Cisco calls, and the final step, we um, provide them fine grainly, and we, um, we could find hot Cisco calls inside these threads. And now we have the fast path. The BTC translator will translate them into BTC, and then BTC runtime will execute them in the kernel space. So ideally, the BTC Runtime will, uh, will finish the fast path and it will call another do Cisco function. This is for the next Cisco. And by some, in some other scenarios, it will add the kernel to, to the user space fast path code. Um, for example, when the 
BTC accesses some valid invalid memory, so there will be an exception, or some code path is not fully translated. And if the syscall is not hot, there will be no fast path, so UB will just exit kernel to continue a regular run. So we just saw how UB works. I think it's straightforward. Uh, so, because of the time limit, I will only introduce the most interesting and the complicated part this year later. And the other components could be found in our paper. And the translator is to dissemble the fast path binary and then compare them into BTC. And since we, we need to execute user space code in kernel space, so the buggy and malicious code uh, could carry kernel. So, to solve this problem, we implement SFI, which was used in either Nanko or Google Chrome browser. And we will do uh, several things like register remapping to protect kernel registers and stack. We will do instruction sanitization to avoid privilege escalation. And we will also do memory access sanitization and branch sanitization. So we implement the translator in a JRT style. The direct branches will be translated at the first time because we will know the target address. Uh, the indirect branches will be translated until the target address is known. So in the left picture, the green one, the jump label is a, a, direct, a direct branch. So the label will be translated at the beginning of the translation. Jump RX is an indirect branch, so label one and label two as the target will be translated when their address is known at the runtime. OK, there is an example of how we handle indirect branch. So jump RS is an indirect branch, and, BTC, and the green box is the BTC of that instruction. Uh, firstly, it will pass the uh, jump RS PC address and uh, the target address to BTC translator through the BTC runtime, and the runtime will exit kernel to, to the user space because no target is translated yet. After the execution of the first path, the, the, first, path BT, uh, the first path will be translated into BTC, and the green box is updated. And so there are two comparing instructions. If the RS is equal to path one's address, it will jump to uh, path one's BTC directly. After the execution of the second path, the second path will be translated to BTC and then the green box is further updated. So in this way, we transfer the indirect branches to direct, to direct branches. OK. For implementation, we implement the hot syscall identifier and BTC runtime in C, and most of them is in a kernel module. And we implement BTC translator in Python. And we also modify Linux kernel a little bit for less than 30 lines of code. Uh, for evaluation, we we, ev we evaluate the acceleration rate of uh, our micro benchmark, low socket radius, and NGX. For the, our, our micro benchmark, it is an uh, application that performs small data size IOs. And we evaluate our work on four settings with Linux, KPTI on and off. And when KPTI is on, the syscall, is, is, the syscall will cost more time. And we also evaluate on physical machine and virtual machine. OK, there is an example. The code gadget is a in-memory file access. Uh, it will use this call rate. And since there is a for loop, um, it is this call intensive. So we compare our work with IOU ring. The blue line is our ring, the green one is our work, and the, the purple one is the baseline. So we could find that our the performance of UB is comparable with our ring, and when KPTI is on, the performance boost is larger than when KPTI is off, and uh, the boost is higher on physical machine than virtual machine because in physical machine it could achieve a higher RPS. So uh, this call is a is a bottleneck now. There is a brief view of the acceleration rate in, in uh, other three scenarios. For raw socket, it's about 30 to 40 percent. For Redis, it's about negative 5 to 16 percent. And for NGX, it's negative 1 to 13 percent. Uh, all these numbers are tested on physical machine with KPTI on. And uh, there are some negative uh, numbers because 
uh, because the in that time the the cost of of SQL profiler is uh, is larger than the benefit of UV. So, but we could adjust the parameter to over this. Uh, the details could be found in our paper or this figure. Uh, we we will show the uh, evaluation for four settings with all the data size. And in conclusion, we propose UB, which 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 makes SQL much cheaper, and it requires no development efforts, and it requires minimal system architecture changes. And you could find our uh, code at GitHub. And thanks for your listening.